the wonder of life begins with a spark in the womb. From the moment of conception, a complex process unfolds, leading to the birth of a new being. But this journey is not without risks. For decades, doctors struggled to save these fragile lives. But all of that changed when a group of dedicated scientists, and among them, one man's groundbreaking research, would alter history forever. His name was Dr. Philip Levine, a trailblazing pioneer in the field of immunohematology, whose game-changing work revolutionized our understanding of antibodies and blood group genetics, saving countless newborns and their mothers from the fatal consequences of a mysterious disease. Join us as we explore the remarkable life and legacy of Dr. Levine and the enduring impact of his discoveries on the world of modern medicine and blood banking. Our story begins at the turn of the 20th century in Klietsk, Russia, now modern-day Belarus. At the age of eight, Philip migrated to the United States with his family in 1908, settling in New York City. Philip was an excellent student, eventually joining Cornell Medical School. It was there that he had his first experience with blood groups during his senior year, where he found that his red blood cells were hemolyzed by the serum of a fellow student which puzzled him. This observation suggested the idea of a universal donor, forming the basis for his first scientific report published in 1923. Having received his MD degree in 1923, he went on to win a scholarship to work at a laboratory at the Rockefeller Institute with the then legendary Austrian physician, Dr. Karl Landsteiner. He subsequently identified 72 human red blood cell phenotypes based on their serological reactions later in 1929. In 1935, Levine joined the Beth Israel Hospital in Newark, New Jersey as a bacteriologist and serologist, where he quickly earned a reputation of being devoted to his work. He then went on to publish a number of papers on serological methods while making useful observations on the selection of compatible blood donors. It was here that he made his most important contribution to the world of science, which would change the world forever. In 1937, Dr. Rufus Stetson sent Levine a blood specimen from Mary Sino, a patient who had hemorrhaged after her second pregnancy, resulting in a stillbirth. When she was given a transfusion from her husband for the loss of blood, she then suffered a severe reaction to her partner's blood. By testing Mary's blood serum against her husband's red cells, Levine observed agglutination, the clumping of red blood cells together due to antigen-antibody reaction. But it wasn't until 1940 when Landsteiner and Alexander Wiener injected the serum of rabbits with the red cells of rhesus monkeys and observed an antibody capable of agglutinating, which they named anti-RH, after the rhesus monkey's red cells. The smoking gun came when Levine and Wiener compared the reactions of the rabbit heteroglutinin with those of the serum of Maricino and the sera of other mothers whose infants had hemolytic disease. All were found to be identical. His, his greatest discovery was the fact that the immune system of the mother was in fact attacking the red cells of her baby. Uh, and that was the cause of this disease, which was often referred to after that as RH disease. After seeing more cases, Levine made the breakthrough that a mother's antibody was not simply stimulated by the infant's red blood cells, but was actively attacking the child's red cells, causing anemia and miscarriages. These findings permitted Levine to declare the RH factor to be the major cause of hemolytic disease of the fetus and the newborn. That is, in the case of RH incompatibility between an RH negative mother with an RH positive father and baby. The discovery of the RH factor was of major importance to transfusion practices. But perhaps what was most revolutionary about this insight was how it would then go on to prevent countless miscarriages and save innumerable lives. Little did I think, 
said Levine, that in 1941, when I was discovering anti-RH in the sera of most mothers of babies with hemolytic disease, that this antibody, this agent that was causing the disease, was the one substance also capable of preventing the disease. In 1944, Dr. Levine established the Ortho Research Foundation, a diagnostic laboratory in Raritan, New Jersey, a foundation concerned with furthering the studies on RH and identification of human red cell antigens. With the contribution from Bill Pollack, who joined Ortho in 1963, the first commercial RH immune globulin was licensed in the US in 1968, a product created by Ortho Pharmaceutical. Within a year, it had been given to more than half a million women, and the use of RH immune globulin rapidly became the standard of practice. The number of cases dropped by 70%. Philip Levine, together with two other remarkable contributors, Marjorie Stroop and Margaret Tracy, led a hugely influential educational program, presenting hundreds of scientific workshops and lectures across the country. This commitment to science and education helped advance the state of blood banking and immunohematology for better patient outcomes. Many blood bankers of that era traced their education and passion for blood grouping to Levine, Tracy, and Stroop. Levine officially retired from ortho in 1965, and his research center was renamed the Philip Levine Laboratories. He continued in emeritus status until 1985, winning many awards, honors, and distinctions, while making many more contributions until his death in 1987. As a dedicated scientist and educator, Dr. Philip Levine inspired many young investigators to study the immunology and genetics of human red cells. He was able to uh, really delve deeply into something rather than accepting um, something he didn't understand. Um, uh, and I think it was part of his um, long-term commitment to understand how the world works, what's life all about. Today, the impact of the work he started with orthoclinical diagnostics lives on through its current form, Quidel Ortho, continuing the legacy of education that started with Philip Levine. At Quidel Ortho, we're proud to honor Dr. Levine's and his collaborators' contributions that have left a mark in history of making neonatal and maternal health outcomes safer by leading with science and education, contributing to set standards in transfusion medicine. For over 80 years, we've relentlessly pursued the unknown with a passion and purpose to improve health. And we'll continue to transform the power of diagnostics and transfusion medicine into a healthier future for all. Changing lives, one test at a time.